Hello everyone and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth and today I'll be talking about the fewness of the saved where St. Leonard of Port Morris explains why the most theologians agree on the fact that the vast majority of Christians will be damned and then St. Leonard continues with explaining why that does not contradict God's goodness. St. Leonard was an Italian um, Franciscan priest and ascetic writer who lived from 1676 to 1751, and he is known for having promoted the Way of the Cross, and he reportedly set up um, stations of the Way of the Cross in 571 locations in Italy. I would like to start with a quote from the text where St. Leonard explains that he wished he could tell us that most of us will be saved, but that he has to tell us the truth. Brothers, because of the love I have for you, I wish I were able to reassure you with the prospect of eternal happiness by saying to each of you, you are certain to go to paradise. The greater number of Christians is saved, so you will also be saved. But how can I give you the sweet assurance if you revolt against God's decrees as though you were your own worst enemies? I observe in God a sincere desire to save you, but I find, find in you a decided inclination to be damned. So what will I be doing today if I speak clearly? I will be displeasing to you. But if I do not speak, I will be displeasing to God. St. Leonard explains that the belief that most theologians and fathers of the church hold that the majority of Christians will be damned is confirmed in several passages in the Old and the New Testament. For example, he says that the fact that only eight people survived in the ark at the time of Noah and the rest of the human race died signifies that only a small number of Christians will be saved. He quotes St. Augustine who says, and these eight people who are saved signify that very few Christians are saved because there are very few who sincerely renounce the world and those who renounce it in only only in words, do not belong to the mystery represented by the Ark. St. Leonard also says that, for example, only two uh, Hebrews out of two million people entered the Promised Land after fleeing from Egypt, and also that only four people escaped from Sodom and the rest died there. In the New Testament, St. Leonard quotes Luke 13, 23 to 24, where it says, Lord, someone asked him, will only a few people be saved? Jesus answered, make every effort to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. And also Father Mike explains in one of his videos that is called, will, uh, do all good people go to heaven? I will link that video in the description. He quotes Matthew 7, 13, where is, there is a very similar passage. Enter in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are those who enter in by it. After that, St. Leonard explains that what we've just heard is not a reason to lose hope. He explains that in very many parts in the Bible, it says that God wants to save all men. For example, he quotes Ezekiel 33, 11, where it says, As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. St. Leonard explains that God gives all all people the necessary means to be saved and if you're interested more in that topic there is a book by saint alfonso's ligori that is called the great means of salvation and perfection where is explained in detail what the necessary means are and how god gives everyone a chance or even many chances to be saved saint leonard says that god is unbelievably unbelievably patient with us and that he gives us many second chances to be saved he describes that as follows God is so good that when he sees a sinner running into his room, he runs after him, calls him, entreats and accompanies him even to the gates of hell. What will he not do to convert him? He sends him good inspirations and holy thoughts, and if he does not profit from them, he becomes angry and indignant. He pursues him, he gives him another year, and when that year is over, he grants him yet another. Another very consoling truth that St. Leonard mentions in his text is the fact that everyone who wants to be saved will be saved, and no one is damned without wanting to be. 
He says that in order to go to hell, we need to commit at least one mortal sin. And one of the three necessary components for mortal sin is that we have to commit that sin willingly. So that's why St. Leonard draws the conclusion that in order to go to hell, we have to want it. We have to actively participate in that process of being damned. And also that is backed up by a quote by St. Alphonsus Liguori in his book, The Great Means of Salvation and Perfection, where he says that we acquire perfection in the degree that we desire it. So that shows us that if we want to be saved, we will be saved. Apart from that, St. Leonard explains that it doesn't matter for us to know how many people actually go to heaven and how many go to hell. Because he says that even if an angel came to us and told us that everyone goes to heaven except for one single person, we still could be that one person that is damned if we think that most people are saved, so the probability that we are saved is pretty high, so we can stop praying and uh, frequenting the sacraments because we will be saved probably anyways. And so it doesn't matter for us to know what happens with the, the rest of Christianity or what happens with Christianity as a whole. And he says that if that angel told us that all people go to hell and only one person will be saved, we still could be that one person who is saved if we just continue to serve God and keep his commandments and strive for perfection. Now let's get to my opinion on the fewness of the saved. To be honest, when I started to read the text, I expected it to make me feel pretty desperate. But then I was surprised by how happy the ending of the text was, because it's a pretty strong statement that everyone who wants to be saved will be saved. And it was also interesting to see that we shouldn't worry about what percentage of Christianity will be saved, because that has no effect on the salvation of one individual. That's been it for today. See you next week. God bless and bye!